Yo yo, welcome to lesson 21. Today, we're going to do a deeper dive on HTML, which is basically made of tags. So here I have some basic HTML. Like I mentioned last class, the first line basically specifies that this is an HTML file. Next, you'll see this HTML tag, which is basically a container tag. So inside it, it will contain zero or more tags. Inside, as you can see, there's a head, meta, title, and etc. And like a parenthesis, an opening tag needs a closing tag. So to close a tag, all you need is a forward slash at the beginning, followed by the name of the tag. Cool, next we have a tag called head. And basically this tag is mainly used for setting up the page. And it provides some basic information to help search engines like Google to parse the website. So inside the head tag, you'll see this single tag meta and it's saying char set equals UTF-8. So basically this is saying that the character set is UTF-8. There are many different character sets in the world and UTF-8 is the most popular and it is used throughout the world. So as a best practice, I would recommend that you use UTF-8. So that way you can avoid unexpected errors. For example, if you've been inside a car and if you try to play a song in a foreign language like Japanese, sometimes the characters would not render and you'll see squares instead of the characters. So basically what's happening here is that the character set does not have these Japanese characters. So that's why you see the squares instead of those characters. And that's why it's important to use a character set that is widely used in the world, hence why we should use UTF-8. And next we have the title, which is Vincent's website, where basically the title is the name you see on top of the tab. And finally, we close the head tag with the forward slash. Cool, next we have the body. So you can kind of think of this as the meat of the HTML. So basically all of your website's content will go here. And then we have a forward slash to close this body tag. So cool, you can kind of think of writing an HTML as writing an essay. So here we're saying, okay, we're writing an essay and then the HTML tag basically contains the whole website. So in this case, this will be our essay. The head can be thought of as the introduction where you kind of just introduce what your essay will be talking about. And then here you have your body, which is just the meat of the essay. So here we have the same HTML with two different formatting. And here we don't have any spacing at all. Which one do you think is easier to read and understand? And if you guess the left side, you're correct. Spacing is important because it shows a hierarchy of where each tag belongs. So this is kind of like writing functions in Python where we indent every time we write a new function or an if statement or etc. So in this case, when we start the HTML tag, everything that's contained within it will be indented once. And as we add more container tags, everything inside it will be indented once. So here it's very easy to see the relationships between each tag. One thing I would like to quickly mention is that in programming, we like to use the concept of parent-child relationship. So in this case, as you can see, this HTML is the parent tag for the head and the body tags. And in addition, the parent of the meta and the title tag is the head tag. So basically the head and the body are the children of the HTML. And basically if a tag belongs in another tag, then it's basically the child of that tag. Cool. So now that we got the boring stuff out of the way, let me show you something cool. If you go to Replit on the left where it says files, click the three dots here and click download as zip. Let it download. Once it's done downloading, all you have to do is double click the file. This will unzip it and now open the folder. And inside here, you'll see index.html, script.js, and style.css. So all you have to do is right click index.html and click open with and select Chrome or any browser that you have. And this will open the website locally on your computer. Uh, so as you can see, we've got hello Vincent. And if you look at the file path here, you'll see index.html, uh, which is the file that we opened. So feel free to edit the file directly from your desktop, but I will stick to using Replit because I can just click run and Replit will re-render the page automatically. But on the desktop, you have to save the file and then you have to refresh the page, which can be annoying, but you do you. Cool, now let's learn some HTML. Here's a quick skeleton of how an HTML file will look. And when you build a website, all you're doing is putting stuff inside the body tag. Cool, so the first tag that we'll cover is the title tag, where basically the title tag is just used to show a title for the document. And this title is basically shown on the tab of here. So let's change this to Vincent and let's run. Okay, so for some reason on Replit, it doesn't show the name of the tab. So if you want to see this live, you'll have to open this directly on your computer. Next, we have the meta tag, which is used to provide metadata for the browser. And it's basically just data that describes the data itself. For example, here we're saying char set equals UTF-8, which means that we're setting the character set to UTF-8. Here we have name equals viewport and content equals width equals device width. And these tags are basically similar to a dictionary where you have key value pairs. So in this case, we're saying the key is name. And similarly here, we're saying the content is width equals device width. 
And basically all this is doing is telling the browser how big we want to render the page. So in this case, the device width is basically the size of my monitor. Another meta tag that we can add is a description. All we have to do is open the tag. So meta and then put name equals description. Next, we have to do content equals. And inside here, you can write any description you want for the website. So let's do Vincent is cool. And then you close the tag and the meta tag is a single tag. So we don't need to write slash HTML or slash meta. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, nothing changes in our website. So like I said earlier, the meta tag is mostly used by search engines like Google to kind of parse your website and basically try to understand or even rank your website. Uh, so for example, let's go to google.com. Uh, let's search for Pokemon. And here you can see a title and a description. So now let's click into this website. So I open a new tab. So as you can see, it says the official Pokemon website, and this matches this title. And let's click into this website. And here we have this cool website. If you right click on the website, and go all the way to the bottom, you'll see this inspect button, click that button. This will open some developer tools. This elements tab allows you to inspect the HTML on the website. So as you can see, as I'm highlighting on top of the HTML, you see the whole page is highlighted. Feel free to move your mouse around. You'll notice that different parts of the site is highlighted. And basically this tool allows you to highlight specific elements inside the HTML. So for example, here I'm highlighting this nav bar. And up here, I'm highlighting the stuff at the top. So feel free to play around with this tool. It's pretty cool and you'll probably learn something new. Uh, so if you click head here, this should open up the header tag. And as you can see, there's some meta tags here, some script tags and etc. And let's look for the meta tag that has the description. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see here it says description. And if you see in the content, it says the official source for Pokemon news and information, blah, blah, blah. And if we go back to Google, you're going to see the official source for Pokemon news and information on blah, blah, blah. So basically Google is using this metadata to populate your search. Okay, so I'm not sure what OG stands for. So I made a simple Google search, which is normal because when you're programming, it's impossible for you to know everything. So feel free to use Google as a resource. So here it's saying the OG in your website's HTML code stands for open graph. And basically open graph enables you to tell Facebook how your shared content should be displayed. So I'm assuming this is metadata for Facebook to help display your content when you share it to someone on Facebook. Cool, now let's talk about the body tag. One thing to know is that empty lines are ignored. So for example, if I press enter twice uh, and I click run, it won't change the page at all. So it's okay to put as many new lines as you want. Cool. Now let's talk about the heading tag. To create a heading tag, all you have to do is type H1 like this and close it. And then in here, type anything you want. So let's put hello Vincent again. And now let's close the tag with a slash. So H1 and then close it. And now let's click run. And here we got hello Vincent in very big bold text. So this is heading one and this can go up to six. So let's copy this six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now let's change this to a two. Cool. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we got different headings all the way to six and six is the smallest. Next, we have a paragraph tag, which is just a P. So let's just do P and let's type I am a paragraph. And now let's close it. So P and now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we see I am a paragraph. Next, we have an italic tag and all you have to do is type I. So let's create this. So let's do I and here let's type hello world and let's close it. So I again and now let's click run. And here, as you can see, the text is italic size. Next, we have bold, which is just a B. So let's do B and let's type hello world and let's close it. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we've got hello world and bold. And notice how it's side by side. I will explain this in another lesson, but for this lesson, let's just focus on learning the tags. Next, we have a line break, which basically just creates an empty line in the page. For example, let's go under I am a paragraph and let's add a line break. So to do that, all you need are the characters B and the R. So let's do BR and then close it. And this is a single tag, so you don't need a closing tag at all. So now let's hit run. And here, as you can see, there's this extra spacing here between I am a paragraph and hello world. And you can add as many of these as you want. So let's copy this three times. One, two, three. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, there's a huge gap between I am a paragraph and hello world. Next, we have a horizontal rule, which basically just draws a horizontal line. And to do this, all you need is HR and then you close it. And this is also a single tag. So let's click run. And here, as you can see, we got a horizontal line across the page. Cool. So another cool thing that you can do is you can put tags inside a tag. So for example, in this paragraph, we can bold the text. So let's bold the paragraph. So all we have to do here is wrap the paragraph inside a B tag. So let's do B and then let's close it. And now let's click run. 
And here, as you can see, the paragraph is bolded. And we can also italicize it as well. So all we have to do is wrap it with an I, so I tag, and then close it with an I tag as well. And now let's click Run. And now the paragraph is italicized and also bolded. Cool. And you can also write comments inside HTML. So to create a comment, all you have to do is use the less than sign, an exclamation mark, and then two dashes. And then in here, you can type anything you want. So hello world. And then to close it, you need two dashes and a greater sign. And here, as you can see, it's grayed out. And if you want to do a block comment, all you have to do is just wrap the content inside the comment. So for example, all we have to do is just move this arrow, copy it, and erase it. And then let's put it on line 24. So paste it. So let's click enter here to make it visible. And as you can see, everything within this tag is commented out. And that's basically how you write comments in HTML. They're great for organization. For example, if you write a really big website, having some comments here and there explaining what each piece is will be very helpful. Next, let's talk about links. To create a link, all you have to do is use an A tag. And then next you type href, href equals, and then put quotation marks. And inside here, you just put the link of the website. So let's put Google and then close the A tag and then write the closing tag. So slash A. And here let's type link and now let's click run. So basically now you see this link and it's highlighted. That means you can click it. So if we click this, it's going to open google.com. But in Replit, it didn't allow you to open it. Uh, so let's refresh the page. And here you see a link, which basically represents whatever we wrote in here. So for example, we can change this to go to Google and let's click run. And now go to Google is highlighted in blue. So one more thing I want to know is that you can add another property called target. So type target equals put quotation marks. And then inside here, just put underscore blank and then close the quotation marks. And now let's click run and now let's click go to Google. And by doing that, it basically opens the page in a new tab. So let's go back to Replit. Cool. And now let's talk about an image tag. So all you have to do is open the brace and put IMG for image. And all you have to do is type source SRC equals and then quotation marks. And inside the source, you want to provide a link to the image. So let's go back to Google and let's search for an image. So I'll just search Pokemon, right click an image and then click copy image address. Now let's go back to Replit and then paste the link inside the source and then close the tag. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we got the image in our website, but it's a bit too big. So what we can do is we can provide a width and a height property. So let's do width equals and then put quotation marks and let's put 250 and then let's put height equals and let's put 250 again and now let's click run and now we basically resize the image but the image looks a bit stretched so how we can fix this is we can just provide the width or either the height and the browser will be smart enough to scale the image appropriately so let's get rid of the height and now let's click run and here as you can see the image looks a lot better and we basically let the browser do the hard work of scaling the image Cool. So I can go on and on and on and show you guys a bunch of tags, but that wouldn't be feasible. So I'll show you a cool website where you can search up different tags. So go to your browser and type w3schools.com and click enter. And here go to references and then go to HTML tag. And here, as you can see, there are so many tags. So feel free to click around and play with them. The cool part about the site is if you click on a tag, it will explain what the tag does and it also gives you an option to try it yourself. So if you click this, it will show you the tags and it will show you how to use it. And then you can play around with the code. So feel free to go through this list and try out different tags on your website. Before we end the lesson, I just want to say as a developer, your goal is not to memorize. Your goal is to be able to know enough and be able to use resources like Google or a book or whatever to find the solution. So for example, if you forgot how to bold a certain text, all you have to do is just Google. How do I bold text in HTML? or you can use this site and search it up. So I want to teach you guys the skill of using documentation and reading and trying things on your own. And that's the best way for you to learn. And that's basically how I learned to do web development on my own. So yeah, knock yourself out and try out as many different tags as you can. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that way you won't miss out on the next lesson.